I think at first things were a little rough and I was a couch potato permanently, but I've got <laughs> my act together. Yeah, yeah. I feel like a lot of people can uh, attest to that in the beginning, for sure. Yeah, I, I think like we all needed that time. It's a horrible thing that's happening and something we never expected to happen in our lifetime. So you needed some time to digest that before you could really like be a normal person again. Yeah, absolutely. I have one curious question and uh i feel like a lot of people will get a kick out of this are you watching some of your show back at all or anything you've done before uh no that's oh. sometimes horrible to do <laughs> <laughs> um but i've been encouraging other people to do it i think my mom really wanted to watch the americans back again so she wanted me to watch it with her but um i don't know it's like it's hard watching yourself, but at the same time, I I make myself do it to learn from it. Yeah, it's like watching film on yourself in sports, in a way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Are you are you watching? We can move on after this. Um, but are you watching any other movies during this time or shows? Anything you're binging? Um, I'm really bad with watching anything, but. I feel like there was something. Oh, me and my mom have just been watching a lot of murder documentaries. And every morning we watch Unforgettable and we mm. watch Cold Case every afternoon and we cry every single episode. At least I do. <laughs> so yeah. I'm officially a big baby now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, we have one question here if you want to answer. It says, what's the hardest being social distant? What's the hardest thing being social distant right now for you? I think for me... Um, I find it hard to like complain out loud because I feel like I'm very lucky the situation that I am in. But one thing that was a little difficult for me at the beginning was because I was supposed to be studying abroad in Rome this whole semester mm -hmm. from February until May. And we got sent home really abruptly. And I wasn't expecting it to get as bad as it has been here. So I thought at least when I get home, I'll be able to hang out with my friends, my boyfriend, like go out to restaurants with my family and do those things that I was missing in Italy. Um, but I can't even do that. So that was a little bit of a rude awakening. Like I was looking forward to at least coming home for those things, but didn't get to. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And we got another one on top of that in align with acting do you act in the episodes the good doctor i'm not sure but yeah you can answer that yeah one. yeah i was in two episodes of the good doctor i played um one of the doctor's dead daughter so i was actually a ghost um and i'm hoping that someday they'll bring me back because it was a lovely show to be a part of but it hasn't happened yet so <laughs> your thoughts yeah yeah um one question i have is what is so obviously americans is over and done with it's been done with for a while what are you focusing on in terms of anything with your work or career right now anything coming up after this that you will be working on so because i was supposed to be studying abroad for a few months i had to kind of put acting on a hold a little bit so um and now that I'm home and coronavirus is happening, it's on hold even more. So there's a lot of production shut down. So I don't have anything lined up, but I'm really hoping I graduate the end of this year. I just found out. So um, I'm okay. hoping that within the next year, I'll have some fun things to look forward to. I just saw Pastor Tim is on yeah, here. You, you can, yeah, you can feel these if you want at any time. It's the cool thing oh about God. all this. I've never done this before. This is crazy. Oh, Kelly, I miss him. My mom used to call him um, a pervert all the time because his wig was really creepy on the Americans. But whenever he took off his wig, she loved him. He's an awesome, awesome guy. I love Kelly. I miss him. And Jimmy. Yeah, I was in Billy Elliot on Broadway with Jimmy Smagula. Hi there. Do you have any fun. Broadway coming up? No, I, I never thought that I'd want to go back to Broadway because it really made me hate singing 
unfortunately. <laughs> um, but and now I kind of would like to go back, especially if it's something for a dance role. I really want to get back into the dance universe. Mm. Yeah, one thing as well, I, in our last talk and episode, you said obviously dance was a massive thing. We talked a bunch about that and the the rigorousness of that. I didn't know you boxed as well. Like, what are you doing to stay active during this time? It's... Yeah, so um, usually I go to Title Boxing Club and I love it there. It's weird but it works like the same muscles as dance does in like the same way so my body just kind of like naturally reacts really well to that um but now that i'm home i've been watching like random youtube video workouts or like instagram live workouts that fitness pages mm -hmm. have been doing so i think those people are thriving right now i mean like that's <laughs> they're yeah. probably getting so much like clout and traffic on their pages um, so good for them. Yeah, exactly. You got to be creative and innovative during this time. Let's see. Yeah. We got Holly. What did you love most about the show? Um, yeah. You want to talk about that? Um, I'm assuming they mean the Americans. So yeah. the thing I love most about the show was definitely the people. I think that not that I had a negative connotation of like Hollywood and film and TV before, but like I kind of it comes with that presumption that everyone's like is stuck up and it gets very like I don't know ego is a huge thing. So I worked with so many people who are so down to earth and amazing, like Carrie Russell and Matthew Reese and Noah and Kelly and all these awesome people. Like there wasn't one mean person that came onto our set through six years so it really proved to me that like I could have faith in this industry and it was something that I could keep doing for the rest of my life and not be exposed to, like a toxic environment you know yeah absolutely absolutely oh design projects that's a cool question a little different <laughs> yeah um so if other people on here don't know, I'm studying graphic design at college right now. Um, I just had a class that we were supposed to be doing in Italy, but luckily we got to do it online with um, a great professional and we had to rebrand a company. So I rebranded a chocolate bar, obviously, because chocolate is 95% of my diet. <laughs> and I'm really proud of how it came out. So I might share that soon. And then I'm currently in a watercoloring class where we're using watercolor to apply to textiles. So we're making a wallpaper. Um, so mine is they have to be inspired by Italy in some way. So I'm doing like a coastal kind of theme, some abstract art. I don't know, it's very different for me, but I'm really liking it. And it's been kind of therapeutic to have that. Um, but now that I'm graduating soon, I don't really know what I'm going to do with design if I'm going to like apply to jobs for that because I don't know how that works with acting then. So there's like a lot up in the air. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, if, if you want to answer one of those or I have one, another question for you, but it's up to you. Uh, I can't even keep up with these. It says, it says Holly, can you act in again the new episodes? The Good Doctor. The Good Doctor is a hit on the side. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of my friends who watch The Good Doctor hated me after because I made them cry a lot. And my character was mean to her dad. Um, but yeah, like I said, I would love to be back on The Good Doctor. But I don't know. I don't know if it's going to happen, but I would really love that. I shot in Vancouver and I got to work with Freddie Highmore, who also shared the co-star of Carrie Russell. We both got to play her kid so that was really funny um and again another set where everyone was so uber nice it was unreal and plus it's in canada everyone's nice there anyway so canada is beautiful yeah i've been yes. to uh, alberta it's a really i could see myself being there living there for an indefinite period of time at some point in my life yeah, yeah. i want to go to alberta i want to go to banff i was born in nova scotia but i don't really remember it so me and my parents have been talking about going back there and seeing like where I was from, because I've heard it's really oh, beautiful. true. Yeah, and if you guys want some context as well, and I think it was episode 17 with Holly, we talked a lot about her background. I loved how you talked about your parents immigrating over here. It was, it was great, but yeah, we, you guys can see that, but it seems like we got more here. Uh, we, we answered the question of watching yourself acting. You can talk <laughs> about that, though, if you want. 
Yeah, so um, I was saying before, I do watch myself, like, when episodes come out, or, like, um, I was in Dolly Parton's Heartstrings on Netflix, so when that came out, I wanted to see how it all came together, because it is exciting to see, because sometimes it's so different than what you're picturing in your head, and sometimes it's way better, and it's just a really gratifying thing, but also it's cringy to watch yourself acting, so that's always a weird thing to get used to, but I try and take it as like a learning experience. And if I watch myself, I pick up on little like weird habits that I might've been doing or mm -hmm. like, I think I said on your podcast, like really bad posture that I have. <laughs> I'll notice that on camera. Yeah. Really good. So Deep. you learn a lot. Yeah. And so a deeper question here within like shooting itself, how does it like, can you give some context and detail as to when you shoot and you put it together? Like, how does it evolve into the actual film? Cause I've like, no, no one else really has any idea of how that process works. It's interesting. Yeah. So I never knew either until I was on The Americans. And it's pretty crazy once you're a part of it. But um, I don't know if this is like commonsensical to a lot of people. But most of the time you shoot everything out of order. So it kind of goes by location or just um, what location is available that day because the studio has to pay for that spot and get permits for it. So they can't be going back and forth. Um, time of day is sometimes a big thing, but other times you can fake it. If it's interior, they'll do mm. like different lighting setups, etc. There's even been times where I shot outside in the day and then they were able to edit it in post-production to look like nighttime. Mm. So there's a lot of tricks there, but so you'll just get your schedule for the week. Um, it'll be like a vague schedule. And then the night before you'll get your official one. And Mondays usually start the earliest around like, sometimes it could be like 4am. And then Fridays, every day it gets later. So you can go into overnights on Fridays and end up shooting into Saturday morning. Um, and then you shoot those scenes together, depending on the director and stuff, the set is always different. And however many takes you do, sometimes they have a clear idea of exactly what they want. Other times they mm -hmm. just kind of want the actors to play around and um, then it just goes a into the hands of post-production. They edit it all together and cut it up. Yeah. Wow. So there's a lot of pieces to the puzzle and everyone's very important, everyone's job. So it all has to come together in the end. And then like months later, you see it come up on a TV screen with music and sound effects and everything. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Thank you for that. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. There, there's a ton here. Dream roles, favorite actor, actress, um, more stuff with okay. uh, if you want to, whatever one you want to pick. Okay. Um, well, a dream role for me would probably be to play like a psychopath. I think mm, that's, that's <laughs> that sounds answer. evil. Um, yeah, I never thought it would be, but all of a sudden, like quarantine's got me feeling some type of way. I'm like, I kind of want to play Ted Bundy in a movie, not in real life. Um, you know what's funny about that? Actually, like that I've been watching Stephen King movies and shows, and I mean, I can. You know, it's, I don't know what it is during this time, but there you go with that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it could also be like, it's such a strange, scary time right now that seeing something infinitely more scary is somewhat comforting. Like, okay, well, at mm. least it's, we're not living in a Stephen King story. <laughs> I was watching um, In the Tall Grass, another Stephen King movie on Netflix right now. Um, really great. The actors are so good in it. I've auditioned for that a while ago and I wanted it so badly so when I saw it on Netflix I was like I have to watch this and see how it came out um and it was it was really awesome so I recommend that that's one thing I watched in quarantine back to your other question mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um what are your thoughts on where Paige went after the finale I think that she's living it up in a safe house somewhere drinking vodka straight from the bottle um hopefully she found her little brother henry and they're just playing board games together <laughs> uh, who's your favorite actor actress my favorite actress is jennifer aniston um because look at her and also um because she's so like versatile she does comedy really well she does mm -hmm. drama really well and i think like as a person I feel like Hollywood and the press have tried to destroy her so much and she's really stayed true to herself and like not gotten too involved with that. So a lot of respect for her. 
Also, mm. I think Jennifer Lawrence is really great. Mm. Um, what do I look forward yeah. to when I'm able to go back to work? Getting paid. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> um, just getting back to work in general, I haven't worked an acting job in like over a year now. So mm -hmm. I think it'll be really cool. I think I have a lot of new perspective on it. And for some reason, being away from acting for a while made me understand it a lot more, look back at it. So, yeah. I'm excited to just like bring new knowledge and experience to it. That's exactly it. I think everyone's feeling that sort of rejuvenation or realignment during this time. I think perspective is like a good word to use. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with you on that. I mean, what else? It's like we have so much time. You can't really do anything else except like be introspective and think mm -hmm. on things. Yeah, there's a good one here if you want to. It says, what was auditioning for Americans like? How did you book it? That's a pretty good question. Okay, so after I did Billy Elliot on Broadway, I um, was really interested in acting because I'd never done it before up until then. And so my parents being awesome and supportive uh, took a gamble and were like, we'll go to LA for a year. And if you don't get anything, then we know that it's kind of not meant to be. And we'll just come back and you'll start high school back in New Jersey. So I went out there, I started doing like some acting workshops and I was taking like comedy classes not drama classes. And um, I was just taping for a bunch of auditions because at this point I'd had a manager and an uh, agent, I think. Um, so the Americans, which is another self tape audition I got during pilot season. So pilot season is when there's like a ton of auditions coming in because all these new shows are starting. Um, so I just taped for it and I forgot about it. And then quite a while later, I got an email saying that they wanted to bring me back in for that. So they mm. brought me back to New York and I met with the producer, the creator of the show, the, um, Gavin O'Connor, who's going to be directing the pilot episode and Carrie Russell is also there. So I was like freaking out, but I did it. And Carrie was so nice and not intimidating. And both of us were dancers previously. So we got to bond over that. Mm. Um, and that was it. I got the job and did the pilot and was able to come back home and shoot that and go to high school at the same time. It was all like meant to be. It was really crazy. Uh, so some jobs have like a more in-depth auditioning process than that. And you'll have like multiple callbacks and multiple chemistry reads. And uh, But this one was just they brought me to New York and that was it. That's cool. That's cool. Cool. And I'd say I thought it was totally different, but uh, <laughs> it's really <Yeah>. cool. <laughs> it's really different. Like for every project, it's so crazy. So. Yeah. This is a, I like this one as well. We'll we can get into more of like the, the journey of where you got to now. What are some habits that have brought you to where you are? Maybe some things. Yeah. I like that. Um, I think that my mom really instilled in me, like, giving my best at everything that I do. So mm -hmm. even, like, things that other people might find, like, silly or kind of, like, this isn't going to get me anywhere. I'm not going to put any effort into it. I, like, always give 108 million percent, um, which is also just because I'm really hard on myself and, like, was a really bad perfectionist for a while. So I just wouldn't allow it any other way. But I think that that's really helped me. Um, achieve things that I wanted to also just being well-rounded I guess like even while I'm still acting I try and keep up with dance or boxing mm. or art like I'm trying to study graphic design I think that that's helped me like mentally balance and not like linger on things for too long or get too caught up in my head but also it's just a good skill to have I think and even just in conversation like to be mm. able to talk about different things and bond with people in different ways has uh, been really like gratuitous for me. So um, habits as far as quarantine go, I'm just getting into now. So I'm trying to like work out more often and eat a little bit better. Yeah. Um, and like, yeah, just focusing on schoolwork keeps me pretty busy. Yeah. And that, I mean, to your second point as well, that's when you said you auditioned for the Americans, you connected with uh, one of the people in the pilot um over dance so that's you know right yeah. there it's great yeah exactly there was a lot of dancers on the americans i just realized the other day so it's funny how like people kind of move from one career to the other i think that's awesome mm. yeah yeah 
Um, we got a ton here. Uh, wow. Favorite Jersey Shore town? <gasps> oh, man, it's going to cause some uh, dis disputes. Uh, <laughs> <in Jersey. laughs> I don't really know them that well. Is that sad? Does Cape May count? That's pretty uh, bougie of absolutely. me to say. <laughs> absolutely. I guess well, I go to, I go to Long Branch the most with my parents because it's the closest to me. So it's very nice there. Mm -hmm. Stephen King says that he's sorry that people feel like they're in one of his books. Oh, that's sad. I hope those people are okay. <laughs> also, Stephen King was a fan of the Americans. That was pretty cool because that man mm -hmm. has good taste. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's, he's amazing. He's wrote like over, I think it's like 69 to 70 novels. It's unreal. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh, here's here's an interesting one. Let's do, what storyline would you want to have if you could be on Grey's Anatomy? I don't know if you know a lot about, yeah, if you want to answer that. I've never uh, watched Grey's Anatomy. Don't come for me, anyone. I'm sorry. <laughs> but um, no, that's fine. I was on it, I would want to be like, are there any like psychologists on Grey's Anatomy? No. I'm thinking of like criminal minds. I guess I would just want to be like some doctor who's who's really smart. Mm. I like to play smart characters. As dumb as that sounds and like base level, I do <laughs> like smart people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, I think there. I want to ask. We we can we can let more flood in. Um, but here I want to see one thing. Right quick here someone put in an actual question this time was there any plan oh no so one of the things you talked about when we last talked was being present right what are are there any practices you're doing now to stay present or um just focus on the day-to-day because -day? i know my your mind can get chaotic during this time like what are you doing yeah i've been uh journaling a lot so that was my mm. new year's resolution was to like journal more often um, while I was in Italy, I didn't keep up with it that much just because like we were still settling in there. But now that I've been home, I was like, I can't use the excuse that I don't have time anymore. That one's out the window. So I just have to do it. Um, and I've been doing it almost every night. And it's really nice. It like, I found I found it really hard in the beginning because I would like sit down to journal and realize that I couldn't even remember what happened throughout the day which is kind of crazy. So it just kind of goes to show like how fleeting you are through everything. But um, the more I'm doing it, the more like easy it's becoming to reflect and like pick out the things that I felt were most important or stuck with me the most throughout the day. And sometimes it's just stupid things. Like I think the other night I just wrote, I'm tired, period. And then was like, that's it for tonight. <laughs> so really yeah. depends on the day. Yeah, I love that. I would actually I resonate with that as well. I I, I tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> Holly, any hint if there are talks of a sort of spinoff? People are asking, there's a common theme of spinoffs, if you want to uh, touch on that. Yeah, I get that one a lot for the Americans, because it did kind of end with a little bit of a cliffhanger, I guess. But I haven't heard anything. I would love that, though. I'd definitely be on board. Mm -hmm. um, but I wish. Would, would you ever want to, uh, I don't know if, I mean, talk about journaling, but would you ever want to write uh, a show of yours one day? Yeah, I sometimes think about like writing a movie or just a book. I don't know if I would necessarily like be in it. Like I don't plan for myself, but mm -hmm. there are some stories that I would like to tell. But um, I don't think I'm there yet. Mm -hmm. I need to have like need to be able to collect those thoughts a little better and have some more time. I think with school, it's like hard to think about anything else, but maybe like when I graduate and I have more time on my hands, I'll be able to like devote some energy to that. Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah Do I know how to speak Spanish? No, I don't, sorry. I wish. I, I love these questions. A little. <laughs> Did you have to, uh, you learn any Italian when you were in Italy? I tried really hard. I was excited because I thought since I did French for so long in school that like it would kind of be easier for me because people say that like Italian, French, and Spanish have some similarities. But um, 
that was not as easy as I thought it was, and Duolingo did not help me at all. The scary owl just threatened my life. <laughs> but um, we were taking an Italian class there, uh, but I only think I think I only went to like three of them before we got sent home, so it didn't help too much. Yeah. I learned how to say thank you though, because everyone says grazie like just with an I at the end. And our waiter finally called us out at a restaurant and was like, I'm sorry, I just have to say this because I'm so tired of Americans coming in here and saying grazie all the time. It's grazie, like with an mm. accent at the end. Grazie, I didn't even know that. Yeah, so that's how the real Italians say it. There you, know? you go, there you go. <laughs> here, I like, we can go back to this one. These are some great comments, I'm loving it. But uh, I would love to, I'm actually interested in this as well. What were some movie shows that inspired you when you were acting? Because, yeah, that aligns with your favorite actors, actors growing up, but this is a great one as well. Um, yeah, this is always a hard question for me because, like I was kind of saying before, I never really understood acting. I feel like I, I had a hard time separating, like, portraying myself as portraying the character. So when I was watching movies and stuff, I never really like pictured it from the acting point of view more than the viewer point of view. But mm -hmm. like recently I've been looking into that more, but I think looking back some movies that really stuck with me were like Silver Linings Playbook um, with Jennifer Lawrence and Bradley Cooper. I think that they played like really complex characters and that was maybe one of the first times that I was really inspired by a performance. Um, I feel like that's not a very deep answer but um I don't know I feel like I'm still learning a lot about that and like have to reanalyze movies and tv shows from that perspective yeah no that's that's actually a cool thought because it's I mean it's interesting too you're really good at it obviously I mean your experience <laughs> performs and shows it but uh thank you yeah you can you can definitely learn as you go more too but yeah yeah what was do you hand write or type for journaling uh i hand write mm. i can show you i have it right here oh getting a peek yep <laughs> yes <laughs> um this is my journal i got it in where did i get it new mexico maybe when i was shooting something there um mm. And like, it says it was made in India, but I don't know if I trust them. So basically just like handwriting or like this is a day I went for lunch and that was the, the check was a postcard for Capri. And I really wanted to go there in Italy. And it was like, it was a goodbye lunch for, I was actually with Kedrick who plays Henry on the Americans and Linda Kaufman, who is one of our makeup artists. So I was meeting up with them before I went to Italy and my mom. And I was like, I'm going to keep that. So that way I remember to go there. I have like some little mementos from Italy. Like this was from, this was the waiter who taught me how to say grazie. His name was Simone. <laughs> Shout out to Simone. Oh, and here, here it's a, we got some more things about the Americans. You can feel the, the last four are pretty good. If you, if you scroll down, um, there's some okay. ones about the Americans. We can... Oh my God, there's been so many, I didn't even realize. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, it's, it's, it's all like, we're all getting used to the IG Live. I think more and more <laughs> people are using it during this time, like you said. Yeah. So if I could play another part of character, that one? Yeah, yeah definitely, whatever you want. Um, who would I be? I think I'd want to be... Hmm, that's a good question. I think I'd want to be Stan Beeman. I think he has a really interesting character, and um, he's an FBI agent that lives across the street from us, Russian spies family. And uh, he was a really cool guy. Um, very talented, obviously. Um, but yeah, his character was really, like, complex and amazing and intelligent, but also had to be, like, fun-loving. Um, you had to, like, kind of sympathize with him. So it was an mm -hmm. interesting character. Did the real Italians know of you in the Americans? Yeah, actually, I got recognized a few times over there. I was really surprised. 
<laughs> what? So I want to ask. I I want to get into more of a a goal question next. Mm -hmm. But for you, uh, you're very down to earth and humble, and you know you said you get that from uh, your family, your parents. But uh, you just have grown into that yourself, and you do a really great job of that. What do you? What is it like when people recognize you? And like, how do you feel about all of that? Because I know even in the podcast, you talked about how sometimes, you know, going out to grocery stores or like going out, people recognize you, but you like, even with your friends, just having friends for knowing you and not, you know, Holly the actor. So if you want to touch on that. Yeah, I think you said it pretty well. I, I like finding friends who appreciate me as a person rather than anything else. My mom just asked a question. Um, but um, that's pretty easy because most people my age don't watch the Americans, so I don't have too much of a problem with that. <laughs> most people don't know, don't give a hoot. Um, but when I get recognized, sometimes it's like a little awkward if I'm with my friends, like for me, just because I feel bad and like, I don't know if it makes them uncomfortable, so then I feel bad, but then I don't want to make the person who recognize me feel bad, so I feel like I'm trying to balance the two, but, like, mm -hmm. I always appreciate when people um, come up to, like, say they're a fan of the show. Um, it's it's nice. I usually forget, so, like, when people are looking at me and stuff, I have no idea why, and then when they say, like, they love the show, I'm like, oh, right, yeah, I was on a TV show. <laughs> That's yeah. right. So. That's great. That's great. <laughs> did any behind the scenes inspire any of your graphic design directions um not yet they haven't i feel like i haven't had a time to do many personal projects because i've been doing so much graphic design work for school um but i'm really hoping that i can take some time to do some personally inspired stuff more like mm. yeah if How is playing such an emotional role in a good doctor? I feel like every role I've played has been really emotional, um, which is interesting, but uh, it was hard. It's really exhausting. Like for that role, I had to cry pretty much the entire day that I was working, which was a lot of the case for the Americans as well. Um, and I never really could separate between like my acting emotions and my real life emotions. So I would carry them into my personal life and kind of be like somber, or exhausted from it. Uh, it gets a little bit draining, but um, learning how to balance the two is really helpful. And at the end of the day, it's like really gratifying playing those characters and showing those emotions that people like can relate to on a deeper level. You know, mm -hmm. I really mm -hmm. enjoy that. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah and uh i have i have a question about it seems like there's a lot more americans let's let's keep on with the americans i won't veer off <laughs> yet we have we have a while we have a while you can do your thing <laughs> <laughs> do i have a favorite set moment while filming the americans um my favorite set moment i say every time somebody asks me is when kedrick who plays my younger brother both of us got hitchhiked. We're, we're getting kidnapped while we were hitchhiking, excuse me. And um, the guy was going to hurt me. So he had to throw a glass bottle over the guy's head. And both of us were running away. And he thought he was like really smart and was making fun of me. But then he fell on his face while he was running in front of the whole crew. So that was really yeah. funny. I, I bring that up every time I'm with him. So it, was like it, was a, it was like a blooper type thing? Yeah, it was a blooper, and it was, like, instant karma. Like, he was making fun of me, and then immediately, like, while he was laughing, face planted <laughs> in the grass. He didn't get hurt, so it was okay. That's why it was funny. But <laughs> what an amazing moment. Yeah. Did I enjoy Paige's wardrobe? I didn't at the time, but now it's kind of all coming back into fashion. Like, I complained about wearing a turtleneck every day of my life, and now I'm, like, wanting to buy turtlenecks and i feel like the wardrobe department if they saw me wearing one voluntarily would probably kill me <laughs> also the pants were really tight and hard to move in they were like wearing cardboard Ooh. yeah that doesn't sound comfortable <laughs> no, it was horrible there was no there was no jeggings back then mm. <laughs> 
Uh, how much real vodka was drinking? Uh, it wasn't real vodka. That would that would be illegal. They made us do real vodka shots at work, but we did have to do um, a real shot of olive oil. That was the scene where they were teaching me how to coat my stomach so I don't actually get drunk if I'm like in a spy meeting with someone. So we did a real shot of olive oil and. Uh, Carrie and Margot Martindale thought that it tasted delicious and I was trying not to gag for the whole rest of the scene so that was a good acting exercise <laughs> yeah and along with uh, Carrie and Matthew as you mentioned what was the best part of working with such fun people like them and you touched on this before but um, yeah definitely the best part of working with them was just how humble they were and even though it was such a dark dramatic emotional show they kept it really light and fun on set all the time and mm -hmm. they made everyone feel like they were a part of the family there like no matter what your job was in the crew or in the sound stages like everyone was at the same level so i love them so much mm. yeah i think this would be a good avenue or opportunity to um ask the question of your dreams and goals with the pet shelter uh has there been any progression with that or are you thinking about it more what's up with that so um i've been thinking about it always um but i've still been working with best friends animal society so i'm trying to like help them out now i'm um, just spread awareness on like social media and things like that at this time um but i think i did like uh a logo for my animal rescue for school as like a personal project oh my god that could be my personal project for my graduation portfolio okay thank you, you did just that just come up wait wait did that, did that idea just come up on the spot yeah i've Let's been trying to think what my passion project is going to be obviously that has to be it okay mm. so i'm going to do that um so that'll be coming the end of this year hopefully you'll see it some design awesome. work for it Let's go. That's so great. <laughs> it's so awesome. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, me too. Because the first <laughs> logo I made when it was like my first semester uh, at my school doing graphic design was absolutely horrible. So definitely needs a redo. You got better now. You can you can readjust. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've gotten a little better, but still have a long, long, long way to go. Mm. What was my favorite meal when I was in Italy? Uh, it was actually when I was in Florence. It was delicious. I had carbonara. It was my first time ever having it, so it was very good. Mm -hmm. What's carbonara? It's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> it's pasta um, with some, like, I think it has ham in there and, like, a cheesy meat sauce. Mm. Don't quote That's me That's interesting. On. I'm listen. I'm, I'm I'm Italian. I should know this. <laughs> but that's okay, yeah, I'm very much not Italian, so I'm sorry <laughs> if that was so wrong. I yeah, I, no, I have no idea. So your <laughs> guess was as good as mine. That's cool. That's great. Yeah. We got some. We got some asking about the scene where Carrie and Matthew were supposed to fight, scream at you. Yeah. Um, that was where he rips the pages out of my Bible and screams in my face. Uh, my dad in the show, Matthew Reese. So I like went behind their back and used money um, to donate or to give to the church. Oh my God, I can't even remember. Uh, I did something with the money that they didn't like, um, but I thought it was a good thing. And mm. so um, Matthew Reese started like ripping the pages out of the Bible and kind of going back to how I was explaining before the process of you do like a private rehearsal with the director and cast, then you rehearse with the crew and then like you come to set and shoot the real thing. I was not expecting what he did like in rehearsal with the crew he like raised his voice, but didn't like have that vulgarity behind it and anger and passion so like when we got to set and he did that I was like we were all like we knew that was going to be a big scene for him and it ended up mm -hmm. like got him some really great reviews and people really started to notice how amazingly talented he was um 
And I think I wasn't supposed to cry in that scene, but I just did anyway, because it was such like, such an intense atmosphere. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. So just another great thing about working with amazing, talented people like that. Yeah, it's amazing to see the evolution of that. Yeah. Um, by the way, clarification from before. Thank you, Patrick. It's pasta with egg, pancetta, and pecoroni. And train egg. chef. There That's you go. what it is. I knew I was forgetting <laughs> something. Thank yeah. you, Patrick. Uh, when I auditioned for the show, I didn't think it was going to be that big of a show I, at all. I had no mm -hmm. idea. I'm partially very naive, very green to the business, and also just didn't think that I would be a part of something like that. So it was all, mm -hmm. all awesome. I have a question for... I guess the things you are observing or taking away during this time, if there's like one thing you would tell everyone or even like telling yourself before all this happened. Um, before like coronavirus happened or uh, before my career? Well, <laughs> well, no, we, we, I mean, before coronavirus happened, but uh, you can touch on the, before like your career started to take off as well, because we did touch on that last time we talked, but I feel like it would, shine a great spotlight for a lot of people um, whatever, with whatever they're doing. So one thing I would tell myself before then? Yeah. Um, for coronavirus, I feel like there was nothing that I could have really told myself to prepare except for to appreciate everything so much as it's happening. I think that's something that a lot of us are hope hopefully taking out of this, whether it's just time with your family. Um, or even school, like me and all my friends complain about schoolwork all the time. And now we're like, we wish we could go back to school so badly. A lot of my friends who are graduating this semester, like now their graduations are canceled, their senior semester, like just not to take things for granted. Um, before my career, I would say, I don't know, that's, yeah, it's a hard one. I feel like I never expected any of the things that have happened to me. So it's like wild, but I guess just to be confident and stay focused on things that you're doing and try not to yeah. get too unmotivated because I'm guilty of doing that sometimes too, like everyone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think one thing I want to add on, maybe this, uh, can resonate or resonate with even people listening uh, more self-love during this time or just like because we work really hard and I know you work extremely hard mm -hmm. but appreciating like you said not only the things around you but the things within you and all the work you put in you know yeah of course I think it's also so important like I feel like when the quarantine first started everyone was like this is the time when like this famous author wrote this entire trilogy. Like if you're not writing a novel right now, like you're a waste of space. Like there's just so many messages like that going out about like, if you don't do these amazing things right now, like you're never going to do them. And I feel like that was kind of a horrible thing to put out immediately. Cause like we said at the beginning of this, like people really needed time to digest what was going on around them. And yeah. like, if this is a hard time for you, then you need to also like feel that you can't just push your emotions aside and put yourself into work. I feel like that's what, especially in America, we teach everyone to do that work comes before family and everything. So it's like, we finally have a chance to prioritize our own well being and quality time with, you know, the ones that we love the most, whether it's digitally or in our house. So <laughs> I think it's important to focus on that too, not just pushing yourself. Yeah, I, that's perfectly said. Absolutely. Um, you can, yeah, there's, there's a couple more if you want to <clears throat> answer these or um, and just so everyone knows, if you want to bring in any last questions, we're probably going to wrap up uh, relatively soon. So just whatever you want, just so you know. Okay. Um, I'm trying to look back. What do you think Paige is doing now? Like I said before, she's drinking vodka in her safe house. She's fine. Mm. Um, 
again, there hasn't been any news for Maddie on the good doctor coming back, but I'm hopeful. I would love that. Um, I would love to do a spinoff of the Americans. Uh, The scene where they revealed themselves to me was really intense. Uh, That was a long day. I think we spent like the entire almost 12 hours of that day shooting just one scene. So that's an example of, again, how every director and every scene is done completely differently. We had like, I don't know, like almost 20 different camera angles for that. So and then you have takes within those 20. So we maybe did that scene like I don't know, like 40 plus times. And in every take, like you're crying, you're emotional, you're screaming. Like we were exhausted by the end of that. Um, But that was probably like the most rehearsed scene that we did, just in the fact that we rehearsed it like the day before we shot it, just to make sure everyone was on the same page, like vaguely. And then we also did like a rehearsal with the director on set, like before we were shooting. So um just because it was such an important scene that it was going to like pivot the rest of the storyline. So we had to nail that. Um, mm. Debbie Garner is my manager. Hi, Debbie. She's amazing. Um, it, there's a, there's one here. I'm um, seeing a lot of people are doing acting skits on TikTok. Do you, uh, do you dabble in TikTok at all? <laughs> oh my God. Unfortunately, I made two TikToks um that mostly consisted of me in an inflatable sumo suit that was probably at one of my lowest points of quarantine which is well displayed there i was spiraling check out the tiktok holly taylor's account yeah um my name was hallelujah but now it's something way more embarrassing so i don't even know people people can people can dig it out and find it yeah definitely um i like even a month ago i made fun of my friends who were on tiktok all the time i was one of those like snobs who was like i'm never gonna get tiktok i'm like above that or something stupid and now look at me i spend like 12 hours a day scrolling through tiktok so yeah everything change is constant you gotta you gotta accept it all i know (laughs) i spoke way too soon yeah here's a good one um we talked about authenticity as well uh like last year how do you maintain the authenticity for all your takes? Mm. Um, yeah, it's definitely hard, especially when you're doing it like over and over again. But I think that you kind of balance it out. So like we had a single camera show, which means that the camera like will be on you for some of the takes and then they'll turn around the entire set and the cameras on the other person. So a lot of the times you're not on camera for every take, but you still have to give like like a worthy performance so that the other person has something to feed off of. Uh, So I think as much as you can give to the other person, it's also good to relax during that a little Mm -hmm. bit. So that way you kind of keep most of your momentum for when you're on screen. Um, But also just making sure that like you really understand what the words mean and the emotions behind them. And you're not just kind of like memorizing lines and regurgitating them. Uh, Mm. I think that that's just the most helpful thing is just like really understanding what that character is feeling and having analyzed it um, helps you bring it to the forefront. Yeah. There's a lot of intention there and like meaning to it. I think another thing to highlight is like an acting role is probably equivalent mentally to that of athletes like it's it's very draining and like from what you're saying it's definitely a lot so it's not something to take lightly I know maybe certain people have perceptions about acting that it's maybe relatively easier but there's a lot that goes into it and you're attesting to all that yeah I mean it's still like an amazing job to have and definitely way way more fun than like um you know the usual nine to five it's like keeps you on your toes and it's always changing but it, it can be really hard too but um mm. yeah every job can be hard so mm. yeah and then I have one question actually right so mm-hmm. and I, I know you'll answer this in a in a good light and um so some people oh yeah I'm not Stephen King some people t- want to grow a following or um live more of their purpose like what is you sort of did yours in a really cool process. Um, 
But what would you say for people who want to live more in their purpose or like grow their brand or grow their following? Like what, what would you advise them for someone who's been in a limelight for a good amount of time? If like a takeaway or a couple takeaways, anything for, for them? Yeah, I think as like corny and cliche as it sounds, just like promoting yourself and what's unique about you. I feel mm -hmm. like um, especially social media and like becoming a brand, like you were saying, has become really difficult because it's kind of monotonous in a way and that everyone's trying to relate to each other because that's what all of this stems from is finding someone you can relate to. But then it becomes a sea of like a bunch of identical robots, you know, everyone's posting mm -hmm. like the same exact makeup tutorial and the same like skincare routine and like workout that they did yesterday you know it's just like it's hard to find a way to relate to people while being yourself but I think that that's really what like that's mm. what the people who have the most longevity end up stemming from so mm. it's kind of hard for me to say because I haven't like I haven't put too much effort into growing like a brand or anything especially like a persona on social media because I like was kind of against it for a while going back to someone else's question how I feel about that but um I'm starting to appreciate like the positives of it more now too so it's like a constant battle within myself but if someone's goal was to grow their own brand I'd say definitely like relate to people but in a way that's unique to you mm. yeah and yeah you talked about uh last time as well I love how like full circle this is and it's still aligned just the greatest thing you ever did was being different, which was being you. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think if you think about social media, it all goes back to self. Like if you do the self work to know yourself, know what works for you, then from there you can attack social media head on and you know do it in a really purposeful, meaningful way. But I think you, yeah. you said it really well. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you too. <laughs> when did you realize that um, your role in the Americans or that that role specifically was going to be so important. You can feel it, or you can feel another one, whatever you want. No, no, it's all good. Um, I think I realized, like in season three, when we were doing that scene where uh, Paige finds out about her parents. Sorry if that spoils it for anybody. Um, but oops. <laughs> uh but yeah I think that was when I really started to realize because at that point it was like okay they can't really let this storyline like drop off now they have to see what she does with this information so and plus that was just such a weighted scene anyway that they felt like they could trust me with so um yeah I was really excited for where that was gonna go and it just kept growing from there I was very very lucky mm. yeah here is, a, I'll pop up one real quick. First time we'll do this. Ready? Mm -hmm. I think it'll come on. What's on that calendar behind you? There we go. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. I'm really happy you asked this question. We're getting a tour of the journal, the room. I love it. Yeah. This is a really intimate experience. <laughs> this is my pooping pooches calendar. Um, currently still in March because that's where I am mentally, I guess. <laughs> Who changes calendars nowadays anyway? show you so yeah it's oh it's like actual dogs doing their thing yeah <sighs> well that is that is probably see that right there everyone be yourself be, <laughs> that's different right there that's so cool i love that it was part of a valentine's gift from my boyfriend so he knows me very well <laughs> <laughs> mm. oh here we go ready um and I, I, you, you did an interview of this before, I believe it's somewhere on YouTube, but how did you handle the critical praise while in your role? Did it get to your head? Um, I don't think it ever got to my head just because I'm so self-critical anyway. But um, the things that did get to my head were probably the negativity more than anything else. Um, mm. Corey, what's up, homie? Corey was part of the crew on The Americans. He did like explosives and special effects. He's awesome. Oh, wow. What's up, Corey? Um, <laughs> but uh yeah there was a lot of negativity because I think my character's storyline was controversial in the way that she was kind of sometimes became like the antagonist to the main characters um 
so a lot of people didn't like me and wished me dead and stuff so that was kind of hurtful for 14 year old me to read that someone wanted me to die but um I got through it yeah yeah absolutely that's uh positivity over negativity that's that's tough though for a young person to take on yeah definitely especially when you've like never been exposed to it before and like I didn't understand that they wanted that to happen my character not to me individually hopefully so yeah yeah yeah, that yeah. To separate. yeah I'm sure you're more resilient because of it I hope so <laughs> we get uh we keep getting uh cheers from Rome is it someone's from Italy over here oh cheers I love Cheers. you. I hope to go back there someday. It's such a beautiful, beautiful city. I'm, mm. I really hope that you're doing okay over there with the coronavirus. I hope that your yeah. family and everyone's okay. Yeah. Strong like a tree.